My name is Ekaterina Smirnova and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to test your new art watercolor materials. It is always a pleasure to have new materials, but how do you make sure that you got just the right stuff? I would like to show you. Let's start with paint. And you can see this is still packaged and it's a very nice pink packaging. When I work at home, I prefer to work with a tube watercolor. But this particular set is good when you are going to travel and take your paints with you. You can see there are some papers. On this piece of paper you could apply paints. This is going to be your reference so you know what the colors are. And this is just a list of different paints that they have. Each color is packaged in a tiny box. This type of watercolor is called watercolor in pens. Each pen has a seal that offers this watercolor's name. And of course you can put the pen back into the box. It snaps quite easy. This is a set of watercolor brushes. Each brush, when it's new, is quite hard and the reason is that manufacturers apply starch in order to protect the brush. You need to wash this starch away, just generously wiggle it in the water and squeeze out all of the excess. And I am going to show you how do you test the brushes, which you could also do in a store. Stores sometimes offer this very cool paper on which you can play with the brush. Just um, apply water on the brush and you can test all of the strokes and see how it feels in your hand. You can see that with this brush I can make large strokes and also very tiny. And this is my second brush, it is much smaller. And again I am doing just uh, all sorts of strokes and playing with it. This is tiny one for details. Even though it is small. It's yet capable of collecting generous amount of water, which is great for watercolor. And this very small one I almost never use and it does not collect much moisture. You can see that it's running out of water, but maybe it's good for signing your artwork. So let's now look at the watercolor paper. It is a 300 uh, gram paper. It is acid free for wet on wet technique. Uh, all the details are usually written on the pad. So pay attention to all of those details. And this is actually quite an unusual uh, thing. I've never seen that before. It is an artwork of an artist who I assume worked on such paper and painted this work. All of the pages are sealed on the sides and in order for you to separate them you need to find the opening and put your knife uh, or letter opening knife. I'm using in this case a, a bone uh, knife and separate it from the seal. Good watercolor pads would have this seal on the border because this helps you to keep your paper stretched when it expands when you are painting and applying a lot of moisture on the paper. When the paper would dry it would again uh, be stretched and will appear flat. Since I don't know those colors I'm going to make a similar palette. So I will uh, count how many numbers of colors I have and create a grade with the pencil. 
for this palette I'm going to use a water resistant ink. I'll make a line. And to give you an example that this ink is water resistant compared to the second one, you can see it runs when I apply water. This black ink line is going to act like a black background. So I will be able to see how opaque my watercolors are. Since I have this sticky names for each uh, watercolor, I'm going to also make a reference of it in front. And I'm using a flat brush with which I will be applying the paint that will relate to the name. Make sure that you paint over the black line when the ink is dry. So now that I am through all of the colors, I am going to inspect it. When it's dry, you can see that some of the colors are actually covering the black color. This is a good reference for you to know that these particular paints are not very transparent and they will act more like uh, gouache. So now I'm going to pick three uh, random colors. I'm trying to find the colors that are most staining and are not uh, easily washed away. I'm also picking my favorite color ultramarine and making a nice wash. This watercolor paper is cold press. It has some tooth, but not too much. Once the colors are dried, I will make a test on how well-sized this paper is. With a stiff brush, I am going to try to remove as much paint as possible on that particular area. Good watercolor brands make paper well-sized. That means that they apply enough gelatin or starch in order to, for you to be able to remove the paint if necessary. So you can see that this paper is actually not so bad. I can remove the paint and almost see the genuine whiteness of the original paper. This paper also passes the abuse test. I am trying to be rough with this paper and there are no lumps, no parts of paper take off. By the way, all of the materials that I use, I always list in the description of the video. And since this palette that uh, I got is offering a lot of colors, there are all different colors that I not necessarily need, per se, I am going to show you that you should be able to mix uh, whatever color you like using just the basic colors. So now I'm taking cadmium yellow and mixing it with blue color and creating a green color which is quite close to the green that this palette already offers. So, as you know, I am a big fan of using limited colors because if you know your color theory that you should be able to create pretty much any color that you want. So, for this palette, I am testing the primary colors and this time I'm using the same yellow, but a different blue. They call it a sea blue. And uh, the color green comes out much more pungent and bright, which is different from the previous mix. So more looks like tree green. And if you were to add more yellow, it will look like a brighter green yellow green they call it uh, in this particular palette 
when you get new materials, I suggest you to just play with what you have and see what can you get and what are the capabilities and limits are. Let's try to mix red color and blue color in order to recreate a violet color. Those two colors will mix wonderfully and from the lilac to violet, depending on uh, how much red or blue you are adding, you can pretty much create all sorts of shades. Basically, so far, if you were to keep the yellow, uh, take the blue and red, there are already so many colors. This test I'm doing right now is I'm checking on how much tooth does this cold press paper have. My personal tip to you is to continue on trying different art materials, even though you thought you found just the best ones for you. There are always good materials to find 